Welcome back. Let's now take a look at sports news with Robinson Okenye, who has uh, news on some regulations that could affect Casta Semenya. Robinson. Of course, good evening to you, Linda. Now, the IWF today came up uh, with regulations that uh, could be affecting Casta Semenya in the future. They take effect on uh, May 1st. But uh, we take a look at first other stories that are making headlines here locally. And we begin with tennis, where the International Tennis Federation, that is ITF, uh, President David Haggerty has praised the move by Kenya to create a regional training base to nurture talents. Haggerty has also backed Kenya to host Women Tennis Association, that is the WTA and Association of Tennis Professionals ATP tournaments in the future. We have to create the opportunity of a platform for players to train on a full-time basis and be able to, uh, to compete at the right level. Uh, so we look after uh, a lot of kids uh, who are staying with us 24 hours. Well, one of the most important reasons for the training centers is to help talent develop in certain parts of the world. So we have two training centers in Africa and one in Oceania. So we're really pleased to be opening officially the East Africa Training Center here in Nairobi. This plays a very important role within the development uh, for juniors within the ITF. As a result of this center having come to Nairobi, we have won in Kenya here, we have won AJC, Africa Junior Championship, for the last three years since the center came. Before that, we were struggling with our own coaches. The Kenya Army first ever athletics championships in preparation for the Kenya Defense Forces Athletics Championships had a fair share of mixed results today. In the men's 5,000 final, Eric Kiptanui was crowned the winner after clocking 13 minutes, 34.4 seconds. Ahead of second place, Cyrus Ruto clocked 13 minutes, 35.4 seconds, while Peter Ndegwa finished third. Kennedy Njeru was the star in the 3,000 meter steeplechase with his time of 8 minutes, 32 seconds, ahead of Benjamin Kigen. Nicholas Kiplangata and Winnie Jabet were the winners in the men's and women's uh, 800 meters, respectively. And I can see my guys, they are strong. I prepared for this so that I can be able to beat the other guys in Armed Forces, KDF. Now, South Africa cast a Semenya's long and controversial reign as the queen of middle distance running looks to be set to, to end this year. And this is after the IWF introduced a new rule and this rule is, by, is uh, rather might stop her from running the 800 and 1500 meters races. The new regulations will come into effect on November 1st and will require any athlete who, who has a difference of sexual development to meet a certain criteria to be eligible to compete in restricted events. Running body IAAF has confirmed a new hyperandrogenism rule that could prevent South African runner Casta Semenya from competing in 800 meters and 1500 meter women races. The new regulations lay down a series of criteria for athletes with a difference of sexual development to be eligible to compete internationally. Semenya, a double Olympic and triple world champion over 800 meters, who completed the 800 and 1500 meter double at the Commonwealth Games this month, has always been a controversial figure in the sport as its authorities have sought a solution that respected her rights while also providing a level playing field. Under the rules, an athlete must be recognized at law either as female or as intersex must reduce her blood testosterone level to below 5 nanomoles per liter for a continuous period of at least 6 months. Thereafter, she must maintain her blood testosterone level below 5 nanomoles per liter continuously. Female athletes who do not wish to lower their testosterone levels will be still eligible to compete in competitions that are not international competitions, in the male classifications at all competitions any applicable intersex or similar classification that may be offered. The 27-year-old's powerful physique and deep voice followed by the revelations of her hypoandrogenism left some rivals complaining that they faced an impossible and unfair challenge. 
After the announcement, Semenya took to Twitter saying, I'm 97% sure you don't like me, but I'm 100% sure I don't care. Other athletes believe she has an unfair advantage because of the high levels of naturally occurring testosterone in her body. Now, the Kenya National Secondary School's Term 1A game saw a wide array of talent on display as different schools outmuscled each other for the top prizes. This attracted top coaches in the country in different fields, including the National 15 side rugby team Simba's assistant manager, Murray Lawson, who were, who were out to scout for the best. We'll be looking to um, rank players were under 40, under 16, under 17, 18, 19, 20, probably four in each position if we can, five, maybe up to six, and so and let them know that they have been identified by the Kenyan Rugby Union, so that they know that the, you know, to keep working hard and one day national team honours could be available. The other category we are interested in is the youth, and here it's plentiful. I have seen a, a long jumper who is a great potential. I have seen a short putter um, um, uh, who is already doing very well from Nyansa, the long jumper from Rift Valley. Every region is able to provide here a, a champion. So we will advise Athletics Kenya to see uh, the way forward in ad 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 advancing and supporting the training camps. The quality is there, uh, but I don't think the quality is being uh, exhibited enough as it should be because of uh, the, the kind of surface that we are playing in. I think the surface is, uh, is a big disadvantage to skillful players. Holders Real Madrid came from a goal down to snatch a precious 2-1 victory at West Bayern Munich on Wednesday night and carry a considerable advantage into their Champions League semi-final second leg in Spain. Lewandowski making his move towards the middle, but he's not needed. It's a fantastic finish by Kimmich, who made the break and then bolts the net. Bayern lead. Well, you can talk about Muller, you can talk about Lewandowski and Ribéry and all the usual attacking threats, but maybe Zinedine Zidane's team caught out by the raiding right back. Yeah, the two players that were at fault there, Ramos and Casemiro, both went to close the ball down instead of watching the run. Starts off in a very Navas. <laughs> he was shaping for the overhead kick. Oh, and what a finish by Marcelo. They have scored. I think you have to give a lot of credit down this right hand side to Carvajal rather than trying to bring the ball down. Oh, and it's a mistake by Rapinha. And uh, how costly is this going to be? Marco Asensio is in the clear, it's in the net, and Real Madrid lead here in Munich by two goals to one. A defensive catastrophe for Bayern, ruthlessly punished by Real Madrid. When we look back on it, Rafinha plays the ball, but is Kimmich the closest player to it? Could he have gone and won it? Instead of backing off, he heads it to Rafinha, Rafinha plays it back to him, it looks like he's going to go towards it and then backs off. Real Madrid getting a 2-1 win against Bayern Munich in the Champions League. Remember, tonight it's the Europa League and Arsenal are at home. That's at the Emirates Stadium against uh, uh, Atletico Madrid. And in the other fixture, that is the semi-final, Red Bull Salzburg will be hosting Marseille. But that's your sport for now. My name is Robinson Okenye. Have a good night. Take you back to Linda Ogutu. Great. Robinson, thank you so much. And that's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the KTN Prime News for tonight. Uh, allow me to apologize for not being able to air throwback business. And tonight we're focusing on call boxes who we'll make sure we run.